In this video lesson, I want to go through with you how to use the linear pattern tool in Onshape. It, like most of the other pattern tools, is available in both the 2D and the 3D environment. Let's start off in the 2D environment. So just what is linear pattern? A linear pattern is any time I have an entity and then I would like to pattern that across. Uh, pattern it how? We'll pattern it with the exact same entity with the exact same even spacing. And I get to decide the even spacing. So think things like buttons on a calculator or buttons on a phone. Anytime I have a repeated pattern that goes along a linear or a straight line. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and come up here to linear and I'm going to go ahead and pick my object. As you pick your object, it's going to go ahead and start finding some things on the object to start trying to define this by. So the first thing is the 3x and the 1x. So right now this says that I can go ahead and pattern this in two completely different directions, but straight lines. That's the linear part. So I can change this 3 to a 4. I can change this 1 to a 2 and so on. So what else do we have? It's these numbers that are here, these two ones. If I grab this arrow and I start pulling it out, you can see that that dimension is actually the object plus the spacing, and the same thing this way. So if I wanted a one inch cube with a quarter inch spacing, then I'd have to know some of that ahead of time. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit escape, and I'm gonna put some dimensions on this square. So now I have a one inch square and I want the quarter of an inch in between them. So I'll say rectangular pattern, pick my objects, and this one inch that's now popped up, this is not the inch of the object, this is the inch that's actually part of the rectangular pattern itself. So I can go ahead and change that to one and a quarter, or if you want, use it as a calculator and go ahead and say I want the one inch that's the original object plus the space that you want, and then it'll figure out the rest for you. I can do the same vertically change that from a 1 to a 2 and now I have two dimensions unfortunately they're both 1 inches so I gotta remember which one and if you don't remember which one then grab the arrow first and start pulling it away so that's gonna be 1 and a quarter okay so that's awesome that can really make my life a lot easier if I've got some kind of pattern that goes along a straight line uh, but right now everything is horizontal or vertical is there anything else that I can do well, you can grab this little box here and you can start pulling that down. Unfortunately, it doesn't pop up any kind of angle or anything, and this is a hypotenuse that's getting measured, um, so that can cause you a little bit of a headache on trying to get this exactly where you want. But, when I go ahead and accept it, once I go ahead and accept it, I can put some more dimensions on there. So I can go ahead and say from here to here was going to be 45 degrees, and then I can change this one to whatever I wanted it to be. But if I still wanted a quarter of an inch spacing in between there, I can delete that dimension once it's there. And I can put that spacing on there. And then it remembers, since it's a pattern, it'll spread that around. So sometimes I don't always end up keeping the dimensions that they put on there to begin with. Sometimes they end up getting edited. So you can do some pretty cool things with the linear pattern. Um, it just has to do with trying to think it out ahead of time so that you've got an idea of what you want. You may also be wondering, can I rectangular pattern things that are not a rectangle? Uh, well, yes. So if I come up to rectangular pattern and I just pick an object, those lines will still appear here. They automatically go horizontal and vertical. Um, so that part's always going to be there no matter what the object is. So the horizontal and vertical are there. If you wanted it to be some different angle, then I can put that on as well. So rectangular pattern is not only for things that are rectangular. It's for any shape that you want to pattern something across, especially like this grill plate here or the hexagonal pattern on like the front of the car and the grill, anything like that. Okay, so let's take a look at linear pattern in 3D. I'll go ahead and finish the sketch and give myself a feature. Now that I've got a 3D feature, how does the linear pattern in 3D different from the one that was in 2D? Well, if I come up here to the linear pattern, entities to pattern, this time I get to actually pick the direction rather than it popping up the direction on its own. So I can pick direction and then I can just pick one of these edges and it'll go ahead and do that for me. But earlier it gave me two that I could actually pick. It does here too. I can go ahead and pick second direction, pick direction, and then here. 
The problem is it does the exact same thing it did in 2D as it makes the quantity 1, so it doesn't look like it did anything. You just got to make sure that you go ahead and change that to whatever it is that you want. Here it is a little bit more complicated because you don't get anything that just drag and pull. Here you have to know that that distance is both the object and the spacing. So for me, that was an inch and a quarter for both of these. Now, the only bad part is since these aren't actually touching, it's going to go ahead and blow these out into individual parts. And I can't very well say add because there's nothing to add them to. So they're not actually going to touch. So when you're doing a rectangular pattern, you may need to have a base that you're going to attach them all to first. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this around. So if I was doing something like a calculator, I will want to go ahead and have the body of the calculator first and then do the buttons. So I could go ahead and say rectangular pattern. This is where it comes into changing it from part pattern to feature pattern because right now it's going to try to pattern the entire thing and I really just want the button or the cube. So I'll change it from part pattern to feature pattern. Pick the feature that I want, pick the directions that I want, and so on. One other cool feature that you may really like about linear pattern is the ability to do centered. If I know that I want one button dead smack in the middle and I say centered, it will then center everything that I've got off of that one original one. So then all I have to do is draw the one in the middle instead of trying to draw one on the edge and then trying to pattern out. Um, sometimes that takes a lot more thought than just trying to put the one in the middle and letting it do the hard work for you. So the question you may ask is, you didn't see anything that would actually allow me to pattern something diagonally. Um, what happens just a little bit different. So instead of actually picking one of these outside edges, I can also pick a sketch. So I'm just going to make a random sketch over here and put a diagonal on it. Now that I have that diagonal on there, that's also an edge that I can pick. So if I come into Rectangular Pattern, change it to Feature Pattern and pick my feature, my direction can then be that diagonal that I just drew, and it will do that for me too. So yes, it does have the ability to do something at a diagonal. You just have to create the diagonal yourself because there's nothing for you to actually drag around or pick quite like you did in 2D. So this is one of the ones that's a little bit different in 2D than it is in 3D. Um, but that's really it. So you can change it from a part to the feature. You can choose your edges either as an edge on the part or as a sketched edge that you drew. The distance is both the size of the object and the spacing, and you can do two different directions at one time. And that's really it. So hopefully you can start thinking about some things that you might actually want to try to use the linear pattern for. It should make life a heck of a lot easier than you trying to duplicate something over and over.